Hi, I'm Chase of Houston Frogs. So today we're going to be talking about Dendrobates tinctorius metecho, but we're going to be doing this in a series where not only do I talk to you about different species that we have here in our collection, but also all the different subspecies as well. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that pet stores or that uh, resellers make that don't actually breed dart frogs, which is most of them, is that they don't know the specifics on each and every species. And that's a big issue that we have in the hobby because somebody will tell you that this vibram is going to be good for not only a certain species, but it's good for all species. That's just not true. Let me give you an example. So if we're talking about specifically the Phyllobates, Phyllobates terribilis, let's give that as an example. If you're going to be building a vivarium for that, you want to make sure that you have good ventilation. Typically, when I build vivariums for those, you're going to have about an inch of ventilation on the top. You're going to make sure that the leaf litter dries out in between misting. Now, does that mean that the entire vivarium is going to dry out? No. But you have to make sure that the leaf litter dries out while maintaining high humidity, prevent them from having foot blisters, which will form from bacterial infections if you leave water constantly on the leaf litter. Now that's very different from something like a uh, Dendrobates tinctorius azureus, which you can have with very little ventilation, you can keep wet all the time, and you're not going to run into the same issues. Or, for instance, if you're looking at a tank like an 18 cube, and you're wondering how many frogs you can put in that tank. Well, it is true that some frogs you could very easily put five or six, uh, like let's give an example of an Epibates, like Epibates St. Isabel, you could easily do six in there. But you're talking about Dendrobates tinctorius, like Azurius or Patricias or Matechos, then really you don't want to do any more than four as froglets. And eventually you'll probably have to pull one or two because of aggression. Now that's the big issue that we have in the hobby is there's not a one size fits all. Here at Houston Frogs, we actually have 140 different types of dart frogs. That's including species and subspecies, of course. So I'm going to be going through each of these with you and a series of videos and telling you the exact care for each one, their behavior, etc. So we're going to have fun with this. Let's start with Metechos. So here at Houston Frogs, uh, we actually have three groups of Metechos. We have a 2.1, as you can see here. Now, again, we have two males uh, in this tank. This is a 22 inch long by 18 inch high by 18 inch deep tank. Oh, you see I left little eggs there. Um, so the really big thing about the Tinctorius is you wanna try to provide them as much space as you can. Now, the ones I have in here, I told you it is a 2.1. Now, generally the males will get along fine with the females, uh, but the females will not get along very well with each other. The males will get along very well with each other though. So let me explain like this. If you have two males and one female, then generally you're not going to run into any kind of issues. Meanwhile, if you have one male and two females, then generally you're going to have some kind of fighting that's going on between them for either the male or for territory. Because the thing is, the females fear each other eating their eggs. And so they want to make sure that they have their own laying space, that they don't have to worry about another female coming along and eating those super nutritious eggs only to lay her own. So that's generally why females get a little bit aggressive, a lot bit aggressive, and try to kill each other sometimes. Now with these, every once in a while, I will see where you get a 2.2 to work when you have a large enough vivarium. And when I say large enough, I'm talking about maybe a three or a four foot vivarium because then they have enough space to where they feel like they don't have to fight over territory and they have their own male to where they don't have to fight over that. Um, but it is always best to try to keep tinks in pairs if you can. Now, most people will get four tinks when they start off as froglets. Now, the reason for this is because they're generally very female heavy. Generally, you're going to have about one male for every four froglets and then three females. Now, with these guys in particular, I had actually raised up a group of eight and out of those, I only got one male. 
Now, that happens every now and then. Every now and then you're just unlucky, unfortunately. But it happens. Uh, now, these are very big, bold frogs. The females will get up to be about two inches. Meanwhile, the um, males are generally about 1.75, just a little bit smaller. The females will also have a lot more girth to them, as you can see this one does here. Now, one of the really big things about these frogs is they are super active. They love to go after food. So when you put uh, food in, you get an excellent feeding response. They're not afraid of anything. A lot of personality to them, just very fun frogs. Very hardy as well. Uh, if you're looking for a beginner frog, I would say that this is a great frog to go with. Um, don't be afraid of going with Matechos, even though it's a less common frog. They are tinctorious, so they still do have most of the care requirements that other tinctorious have. They don't need a lot of ventilation. They do need a good amount of space. Uh, let me show you the other pair that I have. Um, so Matechos, generally a 22 inch is going to be an excellent size tank. Now, you can go with the 18 cube, and those are excellent as well. You could go with a 20 gallon, that's perfect. Um, now, a lot of breeders, including us, will sometimes keep a pair and a 10 gallon, and that works, but that's mainly for breeding purposes. That's not necessarily for display purposes. Um, let me show you these here, Matechus. Here we have a couple that were raised up. So here you can see the male, and then over here we're going to have the female. Now again, this is out of that group that we had eight that were raised up. And out of that group, there were seven females and one male. Now, every once in a while you'll get lucky and you'll have more males than that, but generally that is what you're gonna get out of them. Let's go back to this tank over here. So, uh, another thing about them, I honestly would never have more than four tinctorious together. Uh, even if you have very big tanks, then ter territorial disputes are pretty common with them. Uh, now, a real big thing about it is, is when you put them in a tank like this, it's very different from in the wild. Because in the wild, generally, they're going to fight over territory and then they're going to go their own way. The problem that occurs is that since they're in such a confined space, we have issues with them constantly fighting and fighting and fighting until one gets stressed out, stops eating, or is bullied to where it can't eat, and then it gets very, very skinny until it finally passes away. So that's why if you're going to get one of the Tinctorious, I suggest getting no more than four and constantly watching them for bullying to make sure that one is not getting smaller or skinnier than the others. And if it is, then you're going to have to pull it. So uh, generally, uh, going back to sexing, you can actually sex these at about 10 to 12 months of age. Uh, we have another video that's going to specifically be talking about sexing tinctorious, but it's by the toe pads, by the girth, and also by the backs of the males and the females. Now, another big thing about these tanks is notice that the way that they're built, and we'll have another video about this too, we have our false bottom, we have our calcine clay after a screen mesh, our tropical substrate, ABG, and then leaf litter. Now, we don't have any kind of water in here. Um, now, if you ever are going to put any kind of water in here whatsoever, then it has to be extremely shallow. The reason for this is because if there is ever any fighting that occurs, then it's very easy for one female to push another's head underwater and drown the other female. Also, you have to make sure that you change out the water a minimum of every other day. The reason being that stagnant water becomes a source of bacteria, which can very easily be absorbed through the frog's skin, causing bloat and other types of infections. So I generally don't put water dishes in with my tinctorious just simply because of those issues. Uh, you have to be very, very vigilant about changing out the water and you have to make sure it's shallow enough that if one female tries to press another female's head under water if you have multiple females that they can't drown each other. Now again, with that aggressiveness still comes a very bold attitude and that's a great reason for them to be a beginner dart frog. 
They're also not as prone to ventilation or moisture-related ailments as other dart frogs and are generally more active, larger frogs. They're very personable as well. So they'll actually eventually learn to come to the front of the tank to beg for food and are some of the most personal dart frogs, I would say, in the hobby. Now, if y'all have any questions about any kind of tinctorius whatsoever, or rhodus, or epibates, or phylobates, etc., etc., please feel free to email us at houstonfrogs at yahoo.com or check us out at houstonfrogs.com. Now, again, this is about Tinctorius Matecho. Um, I really appreciate all of y'all watching today. Make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, and look out for our other videos.